Hi guys, it's Cloudy. How are you all? Welcome back to another video in our gaming corner. Today we're going to get really nice and cozy and talk about one of my favorite games right now, which is World of Warcraft. I started playing World of Warcraft in the previous season of Dragonflight, in season 2 of Dragonflight near the end. And I played it for about a couple of months before we started season 3 of Dragonflight. I felt like since there is a lot of content online related to pro gameplay or dungeon run-throughs and how you can explore the game, I felt like there aren't that many people talking about the struggles that people go through when they're first learning this game. I really hope that this video can be helpful to some people who might be going through the same things that I'm going through. Also, don't get so stressed when you're playing World of Warcraft and you're trying to run really high level stuff. So without further ado, let's get started. I wanted to talk about my first impressions of the game. I started the game last July and I had no idea what I was getting into. I only knew that my boyfriend was really into the game and he has been playing on and off for many years now, so a lot of different expansions. I felt like WoW was pretty intimidating because there were so many different expansions and there were so many continents that I didn't even know where to get started. All I knew was I was trying to get my hands into the controls and figure out how to navigate, learn some of the basic attack buttons and movements that come along with the basic gameplay. The first character that I ever made was a Beast Mastery Hunter. I kind of struggled with it for a couple of levels and I really didn't like it at all. I looked at some of the characters that were available in the opening screen and the second character that I chose to play was Warrior because I wanted to play a dual wielding character. A lot of years ago I played a PlayStation 2 game called Soul Calibur 2 and my favorite character was always Talum which was a dual wielder so I wanted to play a character that was dual wielding. Little did I know that melee and warrior is one of the hardest classes to start with because if you get really close mobs will hit you and if you're a bit too far away or if you're angled a certain way you can't actually attack the mobs properly. So that was one of the things that I struggled with the most. After I made a warrior and struggled with that a lot, I ended up making a demon hunter. One of the reasons why I stopped playing warrior was because maneuvering for melee attacks to cleave. So I wanted to try a different character to see if it might be easier for me to actually get into the gameplay. I have stuck with demon hunter ever since then. Nowadays, I found that Demon Hunter is one of the most fun classes to play because there is a lot of mobility, the attacks look really cool, and you get to fly everywhere and also double jump, which makes it a lot easier to avoid certain things in dungeons. I thought I was gonna main my Demon Hunter forever until like high keys, like high 25 keys, but while I was playing Demon Hunter, I felt like the higher level content I played, the harder it got to keep up with the DPS rotations. So for a lot of people in this game, there are a lot of add-ons that you can input into the game to help you track your damage, track spells that are going on, track your rotations, track your healing. For me, the hardest thing was getting my rotations to the point where the DPS damage was matching the high level that I was trying to play. A lot of times, if you are playing a DPS character and your damage isn't high enough, then you can actually clear and time the dungeons well. And it also inconveniences other people in the team as well. So DPSing was actually really stressful for me because I kept seeing other people in the guild and other their friends of friends they were always really really good so I tried to take my mind off of it by trying healing I wanted to try healing but I didn't want it to be really stressful so one of the classes I was recommended was holy priest and holy priest is your most basic bread and butter kind of healer someone takes damage then you apply heals so the concept was very easy for me to understand and a lot of the heals were not based off of rotations or dots where you have to foresee incoming damage a lot of the heals are just based off of situational and I really liked playing Holy Priest because I was able to take a step back, observe what was happening in the dungeon, and sort of enjoy the process of clearing the dungeon without having the stress of DPSing non-stop. When I was asking my boyfriend for tips, he told me that DPSing is like everyone is drinking from the same bowl at the same time. If you drink quicker, you can snag more DPS. Hitting quicker, having better rotations, planning your cooldowns in a better place, then you'll become a better DPS. And I found all of these things really stressful for me. So I actually felt like healing gave me a lot more of a renewed purpose when it came to playing dungeons in the game. Another challenge that I really struggled with was location and continents and geography. 
there is essentially no navigation system outside of questing. So if you see a particular item or something that you need to farm in a continent or in a specific place, you yourself have to go online and figure out how to get there. And because World of Warcraft is broken down into two factions, Alliance and Horde, certain places are not Alliance friendly and Horde characters will shoot at you and certain places are not Horde friendly and Alliance characters will attack you. So there are different portals that are set up in World of Warcraft that lead you to jumping points that will help you get to the same desired location. Another aspect that I found really difficult as a new player was endgame content. There are basically two or three kinds of endgame content that you can participate in in World of Warcraft. The first is related to dungeons. They're called mythic dungeons or mythic keys where you run a party with five men and you try to complete the dungeon within 30 to 40 minutes. The second is a raid where a group of 20 to 30 people will assemble and they try to take down a series of bosses. There are about three different difficulties so it requires a lot of teamwork and a lot of coordination the third one is PvP, which I don't play at all because I've heard it's even more stressful than regular endgame content, so I don't play PvP. I mainly focus on playing Mythic Keys nowadays, and I really like watching myself raise my Mythic rating. My goal was to get to 3.0 with my Priest or my Demon Hunter, and I was able to do that recently, so I'm really happy about that. The hardest part for me learning Mythic Keys was the mechanics. In World of Warcraft, there is a lot of endgame content that people are always chasing. And if you want to be part of the endgame content, play high-level dungeons and high-level raids, you need to know the mechanics. So knowing the mechanics means making sure you don't step on the wrong things. You can take damage from certain effects on the ground. You also need to know the timing of certain spells that mobs will cast. If the mobs cast a deadly spell and you didn't interrupt it, you're gonna die in high keys and everyone else is gonna die in high keys. So you will be penalized for a lot of small mistakes as you keep playing higher keys. When I used to play lower keys, which were keys ranging from 10 to 18, I felt like the people that were playing there were a lot more relaxed and more chatty, more inclined to make friends with strangers versus in higher keys, there's often really experienced players, but because they're experienced and they're playing high level keys, they also expect you to have the same sort of like etiquette. And if you don't play the mechanics properly, you'll get yelled at in pugs by strangers. Like that's one of the things that was a little bit traumatizing for me when I was playing healer, because sometimes I would be pouring heals into a certain class or a certain player, but just because that class is squishier by nature, they will just take more damage. They're just more susceptible to die, which is not my fault. It's just the way that the class was created. As I was playing a lot of keys, I had a lot of imposter syndrome because I really felt like, what am I doing here? Why am I not improving fast enough? Why can't I be that good? I've never played such technical, challenging games in my life. So now that we've gotten all of the struggles out of the way, I wanted to give you guys some tips on what you can do as a new player for World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft has been around for 20 years now and there is so much content and there are so many daily things that you would never know about if you're a new player. So my first tip is for you to find a friend. You can find a friend through Discord or guilds. There are a lot of communities you can look up online or you can just literally make friends with whoever you happen to play dungeons with in the game. Sometimes people are chatty and they're really friendly and you might make a really good friend. Sometimes people are just rude. In that case, you can ignore them. But I feel like making friends with people is really useful in the game because one, it is an MMORPG game, which means you are expected to socialize to a certain extent and to longtime players they know a lot of quality of life things that you as a new player don't know another tip is to watch videos and look at a lot of online websites so i believe the main two helper websites are icy veins and also wowhead they have pretty much everything you need to know about loot enchantments rotations talents so anything you need from there you can grab from those websites and also there are tons of people that make videos on dungeon gameplay and high level keys or raids or techniques and all the information is out there you just gotta look for it in my case i like to learn as i'm playing so i'll just play the same dungeon 10 times over when the season starts and then learn the mechanics as I'm playing. But that also means I miss out on a lot of like small details that other people might know about if they actually watched a detailed video about it. Another tip that I have for you is to read everything. I don't entirely know how all my talents and passives and spells are put together, but I have a general sense of the key spells that I need to use. And I feel like when you read through things, you learn the cooldowns for your class. It's a lot easier to figure out how to prioritize the spells that you're using as you're fighting. And the last 
tip that I have is to actually make a class that's just for exploration. So earlier I talked about how location is a really big factor that I struggled with. What I did was I made a mage and mages can create portals. As you create portals, you will be able to notice how each continent places together. I like to explore a lot because World of Warcraft is quite beautiful. As well, I also use my mage to explore so I can catch pets for pet battles. There are also lore videos online that you can read so you can learn about each region and their backstories too. Alright, this has been a really long video. If you guys related to any of these things, let me know in the comments what was the most difficult part of WoW for you and what have you been struggling with. If you guys like this video, I'm going to do more WoW noob videos in the future. I feel like I really like documenting my journey in this game because this game has so much longevity, so much history, and there's always so many interesting improvements or interesting aspects that I'm learning about the game that I didn't know before. So I'm really excited to make more gaming videos in that aspect. And if you guys like this video, don't forget to subscribe for more, and I'll talk to you guys very soon in my next one. Bye!